Well, we have a request here uh, asking, could you make a quick tip on how to make something look wet, like a wet leaf or a rock in the stream? Well, it's a different subject, but the same old answer. Stay tuned. You know, it works this way every single time. When you're focusing your attention on what it is, wet, wet anything, wet rocks, wet leaves, whatever. If, if that's where your attention is, you're probably are not going to see how to do it. The thing is, we painters have to get this straight. We've got to learn how to switch our attention away from what it is to what it looks like or what's going on, what's happening uh, to the things that make it look like the way it does. All right, so I've got two photos here of uh, rushing water. I was trying to find uh, some pebbles in water. I couldn't find anything that really showed, would show it clearly on the screen. So I got these, uh, and I decided let's focus on rock because that's the same principle as anything else you look at that's wet. It all does the same thing when it's wet. And, and so, um, so let's just focus on this rock right here. And if you look in here, you'll see a similar thing going on where you feel the rock is wet or you read it and you you know but because of what you see the rock is wet why is it why does it appear that way well guess what it's simply value it's the differences in value between the rock and in this case we don't have a dry part of the rock but think about what wet does wet creates kind of a mirror effect when it's wet it's shiny, it's reflecting back the light like a mirror. And so in reflecting back that light, uh, it's going to make it lighter. So we as painters look at that and then we can see it's light, lighter in value, lighter here than it is here. But there are two kinds of ways that we can see uh, light, the difference between light and dark. One is when they are contrasted side by side a light and you can see here there's a light here and a light and a dark here you can see that they are side by side and so we have a contrast but then there's gradation where the light gradually changes to dark like it does here or like it does here and that's what causes us to actually feel the wet is is how the well it's the value difference it's also the gradation so I'm going to show you, uh, now that I've pointed that out, I'm going to show you just a very brief little demonstration of how we can make that happen because it's not just that it's lighter, but how much lighter is it? Now I find that anytime I'm dealing with something that has gradations in it, it really does help to create those gradations on my palette first, create the potential gradations on my palette first. Of course, you've seen so many of our quick tips where I'm using the value line that I call it, some people call it something else, I can't remember what, but anyway, uh, I like to call it the value line because it is a line of value. And when we're working with gradations, I like to create the value line itself in a gradation. So that will save you a lot of agony and guessing uh, if you do that first, uh, define, def define, find what colors you're going to need, then create these gradations on the palette of those colors, and that really helps. Uh, and you've also seen, by the way, just as uh, I've, I've used the value line where I actually make the values in increments. But there are all kinds of ways that we can set up the value line. But using setting it up in a gradation is better when a lot of gradation is going on. Okay, so what are we looking at right in here? Of course we're looking at shape, but that's not what the question was about. We're looking at what causes that shape to look wet. And so I'm going, uh, here we can see that we have very dark, this is the shadow side of the rock of course. We have it very dark and we see then 
a value difference that gradates from that sort of a middle value but we can see some other things going on in the a little bit of reflection there where it goes over the edge and that sort of thing so let me just show you how to work that out and then you you will find that the same principle works no matter what you're painting if you look at it for what is the value doing and doing is the key word it's not just value that's there it's value doing something so i'm going to start out then uh, i've got these two colors this is more or less a it's very much these are very much in the grays and so it's not so much about the color but more about the value i always like to start with the darkest value first and so i'll just do that and we will begin to shape that rock uh first of all in We'll just sort of keep it a little bit um, well, it's close. I'm, I'm going to do this maybe uh, a little larger than I'm seeing there. And so if I'm seeing this rock shape, uh, let's get it as close to the shape as, as we see there, where the shape comes down like that. And, and uh, of course, I like to uh, create the, the shapes of dark that I see first. When, when setting up something like that. Uh, and so then I do see those darks beginning to get a little bit lighter, like right in here. And so then I'll make them just one, just just slightly lighter uh, as it's coming around like that. Slightly lighter right in there and then blend. Now the whole principle of gradation, uh, the technique that we use for creating gradations is blending. And I mean, those are when we have a gradations that are uh, really gradual where they're not one value is not jumping next to the other all right so uh, and then we'll go on around and shape that dark so we see it shape right here as it's coming around like that and then it goes off the edge of the page so we'll just do something like that and you see by shaping the dark first uh, then I have a, a, a starting place that allows me to build, build those values. Now I'm going to technically going to soften the edges of that dark. That's just a technical thing and uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to manage. And then uh, let me get a paper towel here and pull out the excess uh, paint in this brush. Now look at what's happening as it goes up. And we see some signs of feeling of wet here in that shadow area. And so what I'll do there is I'll just go up a little bit lighter. So I'm moving this way on my value line as I'm going up the value scale. So I'm going just a little bit lighter. And then right in here, I will do that a little bit lighter. Just a little bit lighter right there, going up the value scale. And let's see what we're seeing. I'm trying. I'm trying to do this slowly enough so that you can see uh, what we are actually seeing and how gradual we can make that change. Now we see what's happening there, right in here. We can see that we see a little bit, uh, maybe a single value lighter, right in here, and we see that that is turned like that. And this is not that light. I mean it too too little too light for that area there we go more like that and then blend those edges the key is one of the keys to something that's rounded like that is to keep the edges blended and so make that a little bit lighter right in there as we're going up uh, let's see where else uh, it's a little bit lighter right in here right in there and so on let's see i'm leaving some dark there it's a little bit lighter a little bit lighter and you can see just a little bit of value difference now as it goes up in this direction it's gradually becoming even a little lighter this is more on the shadow side over here but even in shadow when something is in shadow uh we can often see uh it feel, the feeling of wetness now there is another thing that you can observe. We don't see it in this one so strongly. Another thing you can observe when you're looking for, uh, when you're looking at something that's wet, uh, and that is you can observe that a rock or something that's absorbent, well, the wet itself will turn it darker. And so on something like that, now that does appear that the light is shining, 
uh, and but we can see the light coming in this direction by the way the shadows are so we've got both shadows and wet that perhaps are causing that rock to to appear that particular value those particular values we're looking at those are the things that we observe and by observing them observing the values that we see them being and observing uh, the location and whether that value is graded or contrasted so those are skills. They are skills that all painters learn to do. Now I'm going to, um, I think I've got a little too much dark in the brush now. And that's the other thing, the technical end of it. Um, as you're working, when you're working in a single value area and the value is not changing too much, you might not need to wash your brush, just uh, just pull the color out. But if, if, you're, if the value is beginning to change more than that, you can see right here my value line, how that is happening. Uh, the values begin to change more than that, then you may need to rinse that paint out of the brush. Technical, that's a technical thing. And uh, so it enables you to get that lighter value. You see, this is a lighter value. But see, it's not very much lighter. It's just a little bit lighter right in here. A little bit lighter. Let me get that just a little bit warmer. Right in there. And where is that light going now? Blend the edges of the light. Blend the edges of the light there. All right, so now I'm in the middle value range of the value line. And this is the, the, the neat thing about working the value line is that we have the value line. The, our value lines will have a dark range, and a middle value range, and a light range. And we watch what's happening. It's just sort of like going up a keyboard if you're like on a musical instrument. If you're going up and down the, the, the musical scale, you can go gradually from low to high. Uh, and, and so value line does a, a similar thing visually where it goes gradually dark and in that dark area to middle, in that middle area, and then to light. And then we, when we're working in those areas here, that, that's where we're working in the value line. So that is a, that's a, a, a really, I think, a... Um, um, wonderful way to work. A logic, uh, it's logical, but it is it takes the guesswork out of the values if we can work by value line. All right, what else are we seeing here? Okay, it's a little bit lighter right here, right there. Now, how much lighter is it? It seems to go, pick, be picking up just a little bit, so let's move over and get it just a degree lighter. And that is just, uh, let's see, is that it? Uh, yeah, that's pretty close right in there, so let's we'll just make that a degree lighter right in here and right in there just a degree lighter and let it blend and then as it comes over we have right there where that rock turns we have a, a little bit lighter right in there a little bit lighter and then it gets a little darker so I'll move back over into the dark area and get you see this little section right in here get that just a little darker uh, let's get that just a Control that value a little bit better right in here there we go that's a little bit darker you see just a little bit of value difference and blend that edge and a little bit darker as it comes in here a little bit lighter there and now we're beginning to feel uh, let's get that good and blended I'm getting just a just a whisper of a stroke blending uh, the blending activity to create that gradation now we come up here and we see it getting even a little bit lighter. So move on up the value scale uh, and pick up more light. Uh, now we always have to take into consideration when we've got color on the canvas that when we put another color or mix another color into it, it's going to, the value on the canvas is going to change. So the value on the canvas is darker, but we create lighter value on the palette. Uh, then when we move that to the canvas itself, uh, it's going to blend with what's there. So, okay, let's see what we've got there. So we've got that and bring bring it over like that. You see it's just a little bit lighter. And then we'll see what's happening across the top there. Just a little bit lighter and it comes down a little bit lighter. I may have got that too light. I'll change it in just a moment. And a little bit lighter as it comes across right in here. And then now we can blend that. I'm going to pull the paint out of the brush and let's blend. 
the blending. And when we blend, blend just the edges and don't overdo. You over blend and the whole thing becomes the same value. You see, so we got a very gradual change in value. As we come over here, we can see the splashing water is coming over and kind of see that value principle I talked about overemphasized right there. So we can do that too. And so what we, but you, re, if you will read the value of that, you see it's not, it's splashing, but it's not that white. Now compare the value of this to the value of where it's really, really catching a lot of light. You see the value difference there? So that's still uh, a really, what we might call a low light value. And so we'll go up into the lower lights, but, but controlling that gradually and building it gradually is the key. And then for as it's coming over the rock right there, we can simply make our brush move over the rock like that. And it won't hurt to have a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit of that uh, darker value of the rock showing through and that even communicates. And that was scumble. The scumble, the scumble action of a brush is, is building the color on the back of the brush, holding the brush is parallel, relatively parallel to the canvas, and then stroking the color on top that we have right there. Now, you see, now as we're pulling the water over there, we might not necessarily need the blending because we can see a value contrast between different values of the falling water depending on how much water is fall falling and how much shadow, how much it's picking up light and how much uh, there is shadow on the water itself. So now a little bit more of what would go here, you see that the light is reflecting stronger on top of that rock and so we might just throw a little bit stronger reflection using a, our uh, using our scumble technique. We might throw just a little bit more. Let's just pull that brush right there and let that do this sort of thing. And then let's catch just a little bit more light. And I'll pull that under brush on just the tip of the light. Catch just a little bit more of that light, like right here. And then let's blend it. And you can see now it looks relatively sharp. But if I pull the paint out of the brush, and then I just allow, I just allow the the tip, the 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 back side of the brush to touch those, and, and just give it a little whisper of a touch there. You see that blends it, and then we begin to feel that sense of that reflection of wetness on that rock. And, it, and then we can, for just uh, uh, wrapping it up, uh, we can do a little bit of scumble in other places to kind of heighten what we've done there. And we get, actually begin to get the feeling there now of wetness. Let's get this edge a little bit more blended right there. So the key is observation. Observe what it's doing. Now, how do we define doing? In value, it can only do well, let's say three things. Value can stay the same, doing nothing. In other words, it doesn't change. It's not changing right in here. Or it can contrast, meaning that two values side to side, one is darker, one's lighter. That contrast could be close or it could be great. We can see here a close value contrast, but we see here a greater value contrast, a stronger value contrast. So value can stay the same, value can contrast, and value can gradate. And what I mean, you know, I already explained to you about the gradation. Gradation is achieved by blending. So what it's doing, what do you do to make it do what it's doing? And pretty much we're imitating the behavior of nature when we're taught, when we're uh, taking this approach to observation. So I think if you will use that little principle of observing and then ask that question, what's it doing? What's the value doing? Uh, we do ask what this color is doing, but for this particular problem of showing something wet, it's better to ask what is the value doing? Where is it gradating? Is it contrasting? And then we make our brushes and our color do that, and we've got it. So give that a try on any subjects, and I think you'll find you actually can paint things looking wet. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week.
And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.